Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and here's your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Wednesday the 3rd of September 2025. Heaps to talk about today's weather forecast update. We've got showers and storms expected across both southwestern and southeastern Australia with two separate large low pressure system features now on the forecast for either sides of the nation. Rainfall is going to ramp up sometime shortly in the northern uh, half of Australia as well, especially through northern Queensland and some thunderstorms also possible through central Queensland and around the New South Wales and Queensland border too. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update if you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning over into the southwest of western australia we do now have a pretty significant cold front on the forecast coming through this weekend so let's just dive straight into it and talk about this feature right now it is calm cool and collected across southwestern western australia so enjoy this whilst it lasts the cold temperatures aren't too cold the winds are not too uh, light and the sky is definitely quite bright that's for sure uh, throughout the, uh, this morning and that's expected to remain the same throughout the course of today but that is going to change as we get later on into this week through thursday we're going to see a strong low pressure system begin to approach the southwest corner of western australia this one is slowly developing well offshore from the wa coastline right now but it's expected to get its act together through tomorrow and it's going to clip the southwest capes very early on in friday morning we'll likely see this uh, frontal system begin approaching the southwest capes around midnight thursday night into friday morning and then they'll move up into the perth metro area around eight or nine o'clock into the morning probably a little bit later for the northern suburbs the prefrontal system system is going to pack a bit of a punch, especially in terms of wind speeds. We could see wind gusts on the leading edge of this cold front approaching 70, 80, even 90 kilometers an hour in places around the Perth metro area and potentially pushing close to 95 or 100 kilometers an hour into the southwest cave. So definitely not the windiest storm front we've seen around the southwest of Western Australia in the last couple of months, but it will be up there. Probably one of the 10 strongest fronts we see every winter season. This frontal system will then push further into the Perth metro area and then further into the weed belt through later Friday morning and Friday afternoon. And you can see the system is expected to lose quite a lot of steam as it gets out into the weed belt. Still some moderate rainfall accumulations are possible out into the weed belt through Friday uh, early afternoon. And then this makes it out into the goldfields as a shell of it for myself, barely making it out to Kalgoorlie by nightfall on Friday. And then you can see behind this weather system here is that low pressure system really gears up south of Albany or tracks close to Albany. We're expecting a vigorous southerly or southwesterly polar air has to come through and that's going to dominate the weather scene across the southwest and the south coastal regions for about a period of about 12 to 24 hours. This will bring heavy showers, potentially small hailstones, damaging winds and very cold temperatures to a wide swathe of southwest locations about as far north as Geraldton or even Kalbarri. We're expecting these strong winds and showers to persist and they, they will occur uh, starting Friday night in a pretty significant fashion then pushing through Sunday morning and then beginning to ease off Saturday afternoon across a wide swathe of the southwest contracting to a location between Albany and Esperance through Saturday night and then pulling away from the West Australian mainland through Sunday and uh, or early Sunday morning into later Sunday morning with a few showers still lingering through Sunday around the south coast and then they should finally clear on Monday. Now this weather system here is a little bit more unusual compared to what we would see on a typical winter's front so generally speaking these low pressure systems they hang a lot further south and they're also quite a lot larger than this weather system. Whilst it is going to pack a punch it's actually expected to be comparative to more uh, midwinter sort of weather systems quite a small weather system area wise. It's also not expected to be too strong but you can see the low pressure system uh, center here really riding very close to the west australian coastline and it's not unusual to see a system like this in early september in fact i can recall one of these sort of systems occurring in the month of september every year since 2020 so again this is not an unusual weather system to be seeing but it does uh, create a bit of a difference in the forecast compared to what we would normally expect for a winter's weather system it means the worst of the showers and the strong winds are actually expected to come into the south coastal region generally speaking the lower west and the southwest get a pretty similar impact from weather systems like this but because the low pressure system is actually going to be so close to the southwest uh, and the south coastal regions the lower west including the Perth metro area will actually get spared the worst these showers coming through later Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon and in fact conditions should actually begin to ease off in the Perth metro area after late morning on Saturday in fact probably around lunchtime on Saturday conditions are expected to properly ease off and clear out of the Perth metro area making this a pretty brief and short uh, lived impact it'll be short and sharp for the Perth metro area but a little bit more prolonged for the south coast and the great southern regions. And that's because the low pressure system here is going to be tight and it looks like the southwest capes are actually going to protect the Lewin current, uh, not the Lewin current, the Geograph Bay and uh, the Perth metro area, where basically where the Lewin current runs parallel to the West Australian coastline, just in this little pocket here. The southwest cape is going to do a pretty good job at protecting this part of Western Australia. Looking at rainfall accumulations, though, we're still definitely expecting some half decent rainfall accumulations. This is totals over the next five days, mainly just for this weekend, but you can see widespread falls between 40 to 60 millimetres expected throughout the Perth metro area 
and enter the Perth Hills. I do reckon Perth is, uh, has a surefire 30 millimeters coming in, about 20 of that coming through from the initial front and then about 10 to 20 millimeters coming through from the showers behind it and potentially some heavier accumulations into the hills from the showers coming in behind this weather system as well. In short, a wide swathe of Perth suburbs could be looking at 50 millimeters of rainfall through Friday and Saturday. Good stuff for this time of the year, that's for sure, with heavier accumulations pushing closer to 60 to 80 millimeters around the south coastal region, as I said, because they're going to be more exposed to the low pressure system and it's uh, southerly air mass that's going to come through. The wheat belt looking at falls between 5 to 25 millimetres, getting closer to that 25 millimetre mark, the further south and the further towards the west you get, but still central wheat belt locations such as Southern Cross or Meriden could be looking at between 10 to 15 millimetres apiece. And even as you get into the northern wheat belt as well, Dalwalinu, Kalani, those sort of locations could also be looking at 10 millimetres. Great rainfall for this time of the year and those farmers, they'll be rubbing their hands seeing this forecast, that's for sure. So very excited for them. And it's also not expected to be too crazy in the way of a weather system as well. We're not expecting thunderstorm outbreaks or anything. So again, very good news. This is a really good weather system to have on the forecast. Conditions could get quite ugly down on the uh, Great Southern between Albany across towards Esperance and especially around the islands and the capes around Esperance. We could be looking at wind gusts pushing 115 kilometers an hour at times through Saturday and into early Sunday morning. Uh, so it definitely will pack a punch this weather system here and some strong wind gusts also expected around the Perth coast. But apart from that, stock standard winter weather coming in, definitely a chance of a severe weather warning or two being issued, but really stock standard stuff for this time of the year and a pretty good front to see on the forecast, especially for this time of the year. We want this rainfall to continue for as long as possible for our agricultural communities across southwestern WA. Now pushing the forecast even further forward, you can see this low pressure system traverses through the Great Australian Bight and in somewhat of a reasonable capacity actually remains quite strong then pushing forward and dragging up another low pressure system behind it through the 8th and the 9th, so next week. And then this low pressure system becomes the next story across southeastern Australia. The forecast after uh, Monday for the southeast corner of the nation is very uncertain at this point in time. It's as clear as mud uh, in terms of how much rainfall we're expecting and also in terms of what low pressure system activity we're expecting. So take this forecast I'm about to give with a very heavy pinch of salt and you can see between other major forecast models there are some pretty big discrepancies at this point in time. I think we can say for certain that a large low pressure system is likely to move through the southeast corner of the nation, large in terms of area, not so much in terms of strength, most likely to traverse around the Bass Strait, Victoria or Tasmania in a similar fashion to the last weather system but substantially weaker than that said last weather system that came through on the weekend and that will likely drag in some moisture through the Northern Territory, parts of southwestern Queensland and into New South Wales. That could provide a little bit of rainfall to some of the more arid communities and rural communities through New South Wales and Queensland. It'll also likely provide some light to moderate falls through parts of Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. Uh, but at this point in time, again, the forecast very, very murky uh, and there is a lot that could uh, change here with the forecast modelling. So just to kind of uh, run it over at this point in time, a low pressure system likely to occur for this part of Australia, but it's anybody's guess whereabouts this low pressure system is going to pass through, how strong it's going to be and whereabouts the worst impacts are expected to be. The good news is, regardless of uh, where this low pressure system does move through, you can see rainfall accumulation forecasts over the week beginning of the 6th, so Saturday, out to the 13th of uh, September, you can see rainfall accumulations between all major forecast models are actually pretty similar. All major forecast models are calling for some semi-decent rainfall, especially for this time of the year, into the north and the agricultural communities of New South Wales. So in particular, around the Queensland New South Wales border, we could be looking at falls between 10 to 25 millimetres and potentially getting close to 50 millimetres into the northern tablelands of New South Wales. And then around the foothills on the western side of the Blue Mountains, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations between 20 to 50 millimetres as well. Also some good rainfall accumulations through, through Victoria, especially into the high country of Victoria and into the Gippsland region as well. We could be seeing falls between 10 to 50 millimetres, a lot higher if this low pressure system does develop close to the coastline. And then into Tasmania as well, some decent rainfall accumulations are also a possibility. And that is reciprocated between major forecast models, especially for the west coast, as you would expect for this time of the year. But apart from that, it really does depend on where this low pressure system moves. If it traverses over mainland Australia, the snowfall forecast is going to be very much uh, quite limited. If it traverses further south, we're likely to see some pretty significant snowfall accumulations, especially for Tasmania. Uh, there's just a whole lot of discrepancies between the major forecast modelling at this point in time. So if you do live in southeastern Australia and you're trying to make a guess at what to expect next week weather-wise, there is going to be some low pressure system activity early next week or later this coming weekend between the 7th out of the 10th of September. 
And that could bring some strong wind, some rainfall, some snow, but at this point in time, it'd be easier for me to give you the lottery numbers than to say for sure whereabouts the worst impacts are if we're expecting severe weather per se across southeastern Australia. It's a very, very murky forecast at this point in time. In fact, one of the murkiest forecasts I've seen for a weather system of this magnitude. Uh, and you can see in terms of what's happening across southeastern Australia at this point in time, we've still got that westerly flow going, so the ugly weather is expected to continue for quite a while. Uh, you can actually see showers are not expected to leave Tasmania until about Friday, and even for the southern coast of Victoria, showers and snow still occurring across a wide swath of Victoria well into tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening before that high pressure ridge begins to build, and we get a bit of a clearer and a calmer weekend. Some strong wind gusts still being reported across southeastern Australia. A murky forecast, that's for sure, but I'll do my best in the next couple of days and check out the Facebook page as well some, for some frequent updates on what to expect across southern and eastern Australia on this, or in regards to this very murky forecast right now. Now, the forecast models have also kicked up into high gear in terms of rainfall across northern Australia. Uh, I use that term quite loosely considering we are heading into the wet season and the real rainfall accumulations are not far away, but you can see the Northern Territory, parts of Northern Queensland, especially through far Northern Queensland, between major forecast modelling, there is some half decent rainfall accumulations now on the forecast over the next or, or after the 7th of September into the second and the third week of the month. And you can see all major forecast models actually suggesting some proper rainfall accumulations here and there now. So what are we talking about? Well, we are expecting a line of showers and thunderstorms to begin developing through parts of Queensland on Friday. They're going to happen in remote western Queensland around uh, Longreach and Windora, and we could be seeing some very isolated, potentially severe thunderstorm activity around Longreach and Windora, and likely some shower activity as well, stretching between a line of Huendon and Charters Towers down to Mackay and Rockhampton through the Whit Sundays, especially the southern part of the Whit Sundays. Also, some potentially some storm activity through the Cape York Peninsula. We're expecting a pretty warm day on Friday, all things considered, and that could bring, uh, with the moisture coming in from the uh, Coral Sea, we could be seeing some moisture beginning to develop into thunderstorms across the Cape York Peninsula, in particular north of Forsyth and around Georgetown and Croydon. We could be seeing some thunderstorm activity there. Uh, shower activity should be pretty limited around the Ca uh, Cassowary Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest, and some shower activity piping up as early as Saturday now on the forecast modelling. Until we get a little bit later on into the week, you can see Sunday showers continuing, and then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, or Monday and Tuesday, especially going to be some pretty wet days up in towards far north Queensland for this time of the year. Rainfall accumulations between 10 to 50 millimetres expected on both days for parts of the Cassiope Coast, and some half decent rainfall accumulations expected to be the rain gauges by Tuesday, the 9th of September. A few days of dry weather before the showers pop up again after the 13th of September, and you can see they're actually expected to hang around a little bit longer and they'll be a little bit heavier as well. Some proper shower activity persisting into the 16th and the 17th before showers finally begin to pull away after the 17th and the 18th. 18th of September for another week of dry weather up in towards far north Queensland. But you can see the Cape York Peninsula especially really dipping their toes into some wet season storm activity now. Showers of the Casper Coast, showers of the Daintree Rainforest, showers and storms possible through the Cape York Peninsula, and a few isolated thunderstorms and rainfall activity expected to happen this Friday or as early as this Friday through parts of Western Queensland. It is beginning to feel a lot more like the wet season up there and that's only going to continue to build in the next couple of weeks. So stick around. There's plenty more to be talking about into the long range forecast modelling as well. There is expected to be a pretty uh, juicy end of September at this point in time. But yeah, definitely a little pocket of thunderstorms expected long range in Windora this Friday. So stick around for those. They could be interesting. Isolated, potentially severe thunderstorms. Nothing crazy uh, in terms of what we would expect for a regular day on storm season. Season, but for this time of the year, could be some interesting stuff that could develop there. And then over to the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia, we are expecting moisture to enter the Northern Territory in Western Australia beginning on Sunday, the 7th of September. And this could provide some showers and thunderstorms through parts of the Northern Territory and into the extreme Northern regions of Western Australia through Sunday night, and then again into Monday night through the Northern Territory. And then in a bit more of a widespread, but weaker and less significant capacity through the interior parts of the Northern Territory on Tuesday and into Wednesday, the 10th of September. Showers and thunderstorms actually expected to fire up through parts of the Kimberley region again on uh, Wednesday, the 10th of September. Again, I would take that forecast with a heavy pinch of salt because it's not until about November or December when we start to see really good convective-based thunderstorms fire up through parts of northwest and western Australia and into the Northern Territory. So we will take that forecast with a pinch of salt until it does become a little bit more certain, a little bit more uh, kind of congruent between other major forecast modelling. But you can see rainfall accumulations this time of the year. We are expecting a pretty solid wet period to develop through parts of the Northern Territory. In particular, like I said, a couple of days of wet weather expected to develop after the 6th, and then that will persist out to the 10th some widespread force between 5 to 25 millimetres are possible and under the right thunderstorms we could be looking at rainfall accumulations pushing closer to 50 millimetres.
Again, I would just like to say that, uh, again, also for far north Queensland, this rainfall here is not enough to flood a drain pipe uh, as we get out towards November, December or January. But for this time of the year, that is a really significant rainfall. And it does highlight the fact that the rainfall onset is expected to be earlier than normal across a wide swathe of northern and eastern Australia in the season of 2025 and 2026. So yeah, plenty to be talking about. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and follow the Facebook page as well. But on that note, I'm gonna leave this video here. I do hope you found it enjoyable and informative and preferably both. And if you have, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out, of course, goes out to the channel sponsors that could not run their show without them. So again, the support is as always much appreciated. Uh, and if you do want to get, you know, mentioned this part of the video, plus get access to, to some exclusive other perks and help the Cyclones channel out in a significant capacity, then click the join button down below. It is a great way to financially support the Cyclones channel. But that is going to be all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.